Hello friends, hope you're really well and I've really missed you. I'm super happy to share with you the special effects edition of my camel project. Just before we get into it, I want to share with you about the little health bump that you may have read about on my media. Um, I went in for screening for a uh, COVID booster and my local uh, general practitioner found that uh, I had recently uh, quite high blood pressure, quite high. And um, so they sent me to the emergency room where I presented with, um, now normal is about 120. Uh, I presented with 243. Sorry, uh, it's quite high, it's quite bad and it's quite dangerous. And um, I did suffer some mobility and uh, speech formation issues whilst there at the emergency room. So it was, was not great. The great news is, whilst at the hospital, they were able to put me on hypertension medication, run me through a battery of tests, and they found that there was very little wrong with me. So that's really good news. The main takeaway is that old Uncle Link is fine. So now with recovering and getting back to creative work, I wanted to offer my sincere appreciation and gratitude for the wonderful people who reached out during this challenging time and, uh, and who offered uh, and continue to offer support for my work. And uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you so very much. So now I'm excited to share with you how I did these special effects on my camel. And the camel's going to be one of the major players, the stars of MAK Volume 2. Lunar Combat that we're working on now and uh, I really hope you're excited and uh, looking forward to my next new book as well. That'll be great. Thanks so much. Let's go. Okay, full confession. Experimenting with burn effects done entirely by handbrush and with Humbrol 33 was largely the driving factor behind this model and finish. There, I said it. Seriously, I think it's one of the best things about modeling and painting. Get an idea in your head, some inspiration, or just something you're burning to do and test out. Base a project around it. Whilst building the camel, I noticed that it has a lot going on in the lower rear half of the model, near the obvious rocket nozzle. These really beautifully designed additional nozzles as part of the main fuselage. I just had to bring them to life, and it was remarkably simple. A typical modeling approach might be to airbrush thin, sooty black, and that would be more than fine. If you're not feeling it though, I would implore you to try out this alternative method. Simply load up a medium-sized, well-worn brush with Humbrol 33, and carefully dry brush outwards from the center of the nozzle to simulate the soot being burnt on the outside. It's completely recoverable too. Add too much or not randomized enough and you can back it off with a Q-tip, cotton bud, damp with thinner. Make it follow what you have in mind and adjust it to your liking. I am so pleased and so happy with this effect and it's helped me love the model and the project even more. Join together with me in saying a heartfelt thank you Humbrol number 33. We love you. Moon Gold. Often something not planned can turn out to be a favorite within a project and for this time it's how my moon gold experiment turned out. Whilst asking myself what would Ko Sensei do, I've textured the tank much as I did on the Mark 44 ground suits to repair an obvious seam line with stippled Tamiya basic putty. Then I've painted on the same Tamiya titanium gold paint I was adding here to the pistons. And then I've burnt it with an aggressive dry brush of the same matte black from Humbrol. It looks amazing to me and I feel it's perfect for this project. These are the final steps where I feel a mechanical vehicle really starts to come to life, simulating the use of oils, fuels and lubricants. As a surface vehicle, some greasy spots should contrast nicely against the dry effects of the moon environment. So I've done two versions of using an old classic, Tamiya Smoke. It's a transparent dark gray and it's quite glossy. If I had to choose, I'd get the enamel version for extra glossiness, but the acrylic version works just fine. And I've actually used both of them on this model for you. I've layered the acrylic version over the gold metallics just in case they weren't cured yet. And then I've swapped back to the enamel version for the extra glossiness on the feet. You can use either version yourself or both. Let availability and even whim decide for you. 
To add further variety, I've pulled out some similar products with glossy clear brown and slightly flatter grey finishes. Yes, that would be the only reason to buy them, to offer yourself more variety. I've worked them into interesting places on the exposed joints for good effect. We can imagine that the camel, it's not undergoing maintenance whilst on the mission, it's just kind of set down and pointed on its way. Definitely an opportunity for expression and fun. There's no right nor wrong here, so please go ahead and trust your instincts. Weathering as an accent color. My good friend Alex, after designing the Mark 44 book, pointed out to me that a splash of color might be a link gimmick, and yes, I'd agree. I often keep close to Canon colors, but do enjoy changing small things. A cheeky red panel here, or a splash of faux oils, for example. On Discord, our friend Raygun had mentioned to me just recently that he really liked the blue lubricant spill on the Mark 44 White Knight production unit. Exactly this, and agreed. I had something similar in mind for the camel, with its red, white, and blue paint scheme. I wanted to splash in some green to contrast and went with Tamiya, clear green in acrylic again. Different from a Mark 44 model, the camel has a large amount of physical area to play with, so I tested out three layers with the green base, a red-brown mid-layer, and then topped it off with the Tamiya smoke I already had out and was using for oil spills, and I used that to darken and deepen the spill. It's really simple, layered, and a little wet blended as I didn't leave much time between colors, and that worked to soften them up between transitions. More importantly, for this effect than color and composition is location. It's on the underside of the craft and I'm looking for more of an Easter egg kind of reveal, a nice surprise that makes you want to see more. An important next step is lunar dust, especially on the legs. A logical step would be to airbrush light, medium, dark gray, dust from the knees down. Now here's where I confess to geeking out. Yes, I love the real moon missions, and I learned a lot about the Artemis program, the current NASA mission to the moon. One of their ideas was to add a slight electrical charge to their spacesuits to repel dust, which is considered one of the major challenges to extended operations on the lunar surface. Wow, right? Isn't it possible that such an innovation might make it to our retro future fun as well. I don't want to change the 1980s looks too much, but some updates might also be cool, and I decided to give it a test run and attempt to simulate what the effects of a system might look like. Hey, if it's fun, it's a win, right? Well, simply put, my idea is that the lunar dust might then act more like it was suspended in a light medium, and it would run over and off the surfaces not unlike the Earth version does with water. So rather than airbrush on a dry layer, I'm applying it as a wet layer with a brush. It's a very subtle and unnecessary change, yet interestingly, isn't this exactly what makes modeling so much fun for us? Now let's talk about the detail of dust and tell a story. The Camel is a bounding reconnaissance vehicle that we can imagine has experienced some combat along its mission. Surely there will be some lunar surface thrown up onto the upper deck inside the cockpit. Let's have some fun simulating this. I've slightly expanded my lunar surface and dust palette to include light blue, orange and dark blue. The brand names are slightly different, but you know, that's what they are. I've chosen these colors to be interesting accents so that they are a little bit more lively than our main drab weathering choices. Light blue is a beautiful oil paint that will contrast nicely on our upper surfaces and show off the details. With everything dry and a light shot of Mr. Superclear Flat to flatten our surface, I've applied very small amounts of straight oil paint near where I want to work with it. A sharp dry brush or a clean toothpick is perfect. I apply maybe two or three dots at a time. Just enough to keep me working, but not so much that I forget where I place them. Then I'll share the simplicity that I just treat them as regular paint, 
that happens to be very strong. And by using them in small amounts in small areas, I don't get too far with them at any point. They're a powerful medium that we can treat with respect. They work fine both dry and wet with a little bit of thinner added. This time I experimented with using enamel paint thinner instead of the ubiquitous odorless thinner just to see and to share if it's different and yes, it is. It's slightly stronger and so I've adjusted accordingly. Now the work is quite methodical and incremental. I have a selection of brushes on hand and recommend these inexpensive ones from Tamiya. Some are sharp and round, some are flat and both are useful. You'll see me applying paint and thinner mixes with the sharp brushes and then manipulating them with the dry, round and flat brushes. Also on occasion, I will use a Q-tip, a cotton bud, to remove excess oil paint. The important idea is to apply and shape an appropriate amount of interesting oil color to augment our details. So easy to write and say, yet quite a challenge and skill to develop, isn't it? I'm most pleased with my various effects here and feel they have really brought the top deck to life. Orange is a beautiful and powerful color. Yes, NASA actually found orange soil on the moon. Really? Let's use it to sparingly add interest and detail to our rear deck and the brown ID band we have there. Adding interest to a detail that's already adding interest. We can do that. Lastly, let's add both light blue and orange together on our cockpit. We can bring them together, but be extra careful as super accents can overpower our work quickly. They can make it look overly busy and confusing, but applied in the right way and for the right amount, they are the kakushiaji, special sauce or the unique flavor that makes our works unique. And if we can make them tasty enough, masterpieces, chef's kiss. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters for paying me to film dirtying up this space camel. I'm exceedingly pleased with the wonderful example finish and I hope you have some ideas from this video. For more of my work, please check out my paintonplastic.com and my books. I'm planning to publish your Mark 44 group build photos soon. Links are in the description.